Hi there, everybody, and welcome to the new features list of Topcoat 1.5. I'm gonna assume that you've already either watched the quick start or you already had Topcoat 1.0 and you kind of know what you're doing with it. Uh, I've already got an HDR Studio in here to give us some reflection and a model to be reflecting. And I've also assigned a Topcoat shortcut manually by going to Window Customize and adding it. So Alt-T now opens up Topcoat for me. So uh, how do we talk about some new features? Well, um, first of all, we've got the little question mark button up here. I think, I'm not sure if that was in the old version or not, but that'll automatically pop open and get you to the help page uh, in which you would be watching these videos. Uh, and then uh, we've got the new vertical layout checkbox. This actually came about because mostly from some, uh, some people asked for it, but also Nick kept doing this, where Nick liked, liked docking a top coat down here but it's not very good at docking in a vertical layout when it's a horizontal plugin. So now if you click on the vertical checkbox, it will rearrange our layer. So we've got our render window up on top, our different tabs in the middle, and then all the different layers, you know, down here on the bottom. So we've got all, you know, it's just a better vertical layout. So actually fits in here quite well. We can even shrink that down smaller, like about to there until it starts getting maybe a little smaller. You couldn't, couldn't see all the tabs. Personally though, I like it undock. So I'm gonna say undock, and I like it not vertical, so cool. So we're back to normal there. So uh, let's talk about some other things. Uh, let's just make a nice car paint as a way of talking about this. I'm gonna make a base layer and then I'm going to add in two layers of flakes and let's add in a nice dull layer and then maybe a lacquer on top. And uh, first of all, I wanna randomize some of the flakes. So I can click on the flakes, go to modifiers, randomize the noise so that they're not identical. And now I can go and maybe make a nice, I don't know, how about a teal? I'm gonna make a teal car paint. Nice solid teal there. Some of these flakes can be maybe a little bright blue. And then we'll leave some flakes kind of white. And then we've got our dull layer on top. So I think this one can maybe go a little bit in the blue range and be fairly saturated. And we've got our white lacquer on top of it. And maybe we can even pull those top two layers back down a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply this material to Whaley, modeled by Patrick Goski. And do a quick render. Oh, we should probably add in our render settings as well and make sure we're on something like light kit medium just so we can get some nice, uh, slightly nicer looking render. So that's all pretty straightforward. Um, and we got our nice looking material here. But first of all, the big thing you probably would have noticed is we can now control our colors directly in our layers view. Instead of going into modifiers, we can now modify our colors straight here. Very useful. Uh, just like cinema, we can click on any one of these and drag the color into any of the other ones. Uh, we can... Uh, yeah, and then we've got our sliders and, and all that's working great. Having colors out is so helpful. It's, I really like it. Uh, what's up next? Well, right away you're going to see that these layers are displayed a lot differently than they used to be. First of all, we've got the names rendered out. I like this uh, the way they look a lot better. But now whatever layer you have selected is actually highlighted in orange instead of a big box around the entire thing. I like that a lot better. It's a lot more cinema 4D-like. Uh, our little up and down and X arrows are gone now because now you just click on the name and you drag it to where you want it to be. Um, if you And now we can rename layers. So I can double click on this one and say, woo, new name. And it's going to scoot everything over and we've got a new name. I don't want it to be that long, so I'm going to say woo. Um, so we can rename our layers. Uh, if we want to delete layers, we can just select them, even more than one, and just hit delete. And then it'll go away. Hit undo to bring those back. And then... Um, you can now, uh, we've got these checkboxes. I think those were there, but now you can right click on any layer and you can move them up, move them down, delete, rename, or solo. If you click solo, it'll turn off all the other checkboxes, but the current one, so I can solo any one of those. And, uh, you know, and then we can go turn them back on so you can see exactly what some isolated layers look like. So completely change the way this layer interface, interface works. I think it's a lot more like cinema, a lot more useful and straightforward. Uh, I really like that. Uh, up next is probably the biggest change and one I'm very excited to finally be showing off is our new modifiers tab. I'm gonna click on just Chrome, make it a Chrome material. And let's go to modifiers. Uh, it was definitely the biggest feature request and also something we wanted. It was more like a mental headspace we were in, but we wanted uh, we wanted to be able to get accurate feedback based on the layer. Now, we used to have it where all of these were at zero, zero, zero all the time right in the center, and you drag it and it would snap back to zero to modify it. That still happens if you have more than one layer, but if you only have one material selected and one layer, then you'll get accurate feedback. And I guess most of the time, that's what you're doing. You're only working on one layer at a time. And we were always thinking like, oh, we want to make mass changes, but you know, you don't always want to be doing that. 
So now we just have chrome. You see it is 100% reflective. Well, we can pull that back. It's now 21% reflective. We have blur amount. Let's say we want exactly 50% blur. We can type in 50%. Now it says 50%. If we select off the material and jump back on the material, it still says 50%. Fresnel amount, accurate feedback. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in a bump here. I'm going to add in imperfections two. Uh, actually, let's do imperfections three. I like it more. And then we go into modifiers, and you see it's a bump depth of 30%. By the way, we changed the default bump depth from 100 to 30 because they were a little strong. Um, so now I can say, oh, crank up our bump depth, and now it's a lot deeper. And now I can go to my noise scale, and it's at 100%. Let's go up to 500%. And that's going to jump up to be way bigger. Um, and if we were to click off of it and click back, it is still showing those numbers. So useful. So useful. Uh, we've got two new buttons down here. We've got color to bump. So if you had like some image in your color channel, you can color it, copy and paste it directly by clicking that button into the current bump or into the bump channel of the currently selected layer. And then we also have an invert bump button which we didn't used to have. So now you see we have a bump and you see how, let's even look at it on Whaley. So you see these are all pushing down mostly and you see it really well here. Click invert bump, boom, now those push out and everything else is in. I guess it's, you know, this one might be a little harder to tell here, but yeah, we've just inverted the way that bump is applied. It'd probably show better if we did something like uh, dense. So we click on dense and we get our nice normal dense like that. Click on invert bump and now they are pushing out instead of in. Looks a little bit more cellular. Uh, crank up the bump depth, get the bump scale. Very nice. Now of course, like I said, if we have more than one layer, copy and paste. Now I have two layers selected. If I select both of them, now it jumps back to our it, the way it used to be. So we actually have to drag our sliders and modify them relative to each other, which does make sense if you have more than one selected. But as soon as we select one, then we get accurate feedback on just that one. Neat. Um, now we still have the color modifier here. That's in case you want to change the layer in the modifiers, or if you have more than one select and you want to change them all, still there. Um, let's move on. So, okay, we have bumps. Those didn't change. Uh, next giant change is our blur channel. So blur translates into roughness inside of reflectance. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and make a nice lacquer material. Let's change our studio as well. I'm going to open up European Holiday and do a nice botanical garden. Um, so, and it's, it's a subtle thing. Uh, I'll just leave it that way. Uh, pop open top coat with alt T if you did set up your shortcut. Uh, let's go to blurs. So we got a bunch of blurs. I'm really proud of these. It took a long time, but I finally figured out how to make a good noise based parametric fingerprint. So I've got a bunch of different types of fingerprints here. Cause I figure that's most of what the blurs are. Um, so you got lots of different kinds of frost and dew and smudges and splatters. So let's try something like fingerprints four. Now Whaley's a pretty big model actually. So let's go ahead and hit render on here, but I think they're gonna be a little bit small for us. So it starts and you can see, let's find a nice area. You see, we get all these nice little fingerprints all over him. Look at how messy he looks. All, he looks all greasy. Uh, he's a pretty big model, so I'm gonna go into modifiers and let's grab our noise scale and do like three times the scale. Um, so now we should have bigger fingerprints and there we go, nice, nice blurry fingerprints all throughout Whaley, making it look kind of gross. We can go back into our blurs and we can go into something like smudges one, which is nice and smudgy. And once again, he is pretty big. So I'm going to scale it up to like 300%. There we go. Look, he's a super messy smudged up whale. Now keep in mind, this is not, this is not a bump. This is blurry channel. I think a lot of the times when people would put things into the bump channel, they're really wanting to put it into a blur channel and the blur channel um, whenever you're doing smudges or fingerprints or even a lot of types of scratches and whatnot, it's really the blur channel you want to put that in, not the bump. Um, so yeah, lots of fun blurs. Those are really neat. Okay. And also I guess important to note is now that we have a blur channel, I can jump into our modifiers tab and we have two new settings here, high blur clamp and low blur clamp. So our high blur is, where is it very blurry? So, you know, all the big blurs, that's where those come. And then the dark black 
is nobler. So we could say, you know what? Like, I do want this all smudgy, but not that smudgy. So I'm going to grab white, which is how much blur is there. And I'm going to say, you know what? I want there to be a lot less. So there is blur, but it's, it's like 50% of what it used to be. So now there's a lot less blur. And you can actually be fairly subtle with that. Like, these can both be very near black. And a little blur goes a long way. So you see it's a lot more subtle, but it still looks pretty greasy. And then we have our clamps. So uh, I can pull up the different amounts. Let's say we want more like shininess. So I want more of this low blur. As I pull this up, then it's going to start erasing out the upper one to the point where we're going to get little tiny patches of it, like a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit over here. Uh, or And we can also pull the upper clamp down so we can actually pull this tighter. So now there's like almost no transition between the two. And now when I hit render, now you see we get this very hard-edged blur, so we've kind of clamped them in together. Uh, you can also invert them by dragging one past the other, and now it's going to flip and be the opposite of what it was a second ago. Uh, all the things that were blurry are now not. And, you know, once again, these colors can be set to whatever. We can jump that up to white, and now it's going to be mega blur and very light blur. Very cool. Um, so I really, really, really enjoy uh, the new blur stuff. And let's see, what is next? Well, uh, keeping within our Bumps, Blurs, and Masks channel, we now have the ability to right-click on any of those three channels. I'm going to right-click on, what's a good one? Uh, I'll do Imperfections 3 again because I like it. So uh, if I right-click on Imperfections 3, you see we can add it into the Bump, Blur, or Mask channel. So we can now intermix all of these. You get some really cool results that way. So if I were to maybe just do a regular, like, click on Imperfections 3, and now this is in the Bump channel, so I hit Render. Let's see what we get. It's just a nice chrome. Um, this actually might show up a little bit better if we do it on Lacquer. So I'm going to just add in an Imperfections 3 on top of the Lacquer. Let's even push our Bump a little bit further. And now you'll see that we just get our nice, strong bump. It might be a little small, but I think it's fine. Yeah, it's a little small. Eh, let's leave it at 100. Um, but now I can right-click on our imperfections and add it also to our blur channel. So now you'll see that in the same place as the bump was, now it's blurry. So now based on kind of the height map, we're getting different amounts of blur. Um, now maybe I want to do the opposite. Maybe I want to clamp it. Maybe I want to... Um, let's see, let's go into our modifiers tab. If I, this is noise scale, so if I do 300, actually both of them are jumping up 300. It's doing masks and blurs and bumps. All of them are based on the same noise scale. Um, and now we could do maybe deeper blur and maybe clamp, uh, clamp our blur in and maybe even invert it. So yeah, let's do, let's do that. So now we got this nice clamped blur based off the same bump. And now look at this gorgeous, like super messed up, material on him kind of like a like really shiny paint that's been getting a little bit roughed up um so you can add any channel into any other channel so from scratch we do something like create a uh, chrome and then we can go into our masks and right click and add cracks into our bump and blur channel and it's gonna be hard to see anything uh right here because this window's too small to see this uh fine noise but now we're not using a mask, we're just bumping and blurring these cracks, and we're getting a really nice cracked looking whaley. Actually, I don't think I've done that particular combination before. It looks pretty cool. Let's go to the modifiers and double the scale and see what that looks like. Yeah, look, it's like a shattered whaley. That looks cool. Um, so being able to intermix all those channels is giving, wow, that looks great. Um, gives a lot more ability to get some really cool uh, layers and just have more options inside of these uh, different presets. So just right click on any of these images, add it to any other channel you want. Um, let's see, and I think the last thing is anastropic, our anastropic tab. So I'm going to start from scratch with a nice new Chrome and... Let's go to anastropic and actually let's go to our metals and make a nice aluminum. Aluminum always looks nice in uh, anastropic metals. Now, anastropic, it has one small downside. And that's the reason we didn't put in the original uh, top coat. Uh, but I wanted, to, I wanted to add it this time. In anastropic materials, the projection matters. So if I were to click vertical lines, Whaley doesn't have, uh, he's, his UVs were never properly unwrapped. So if I were to just hit render with vertical lines, he's going to be messed up. You see his UVs are throwing these all over the place. So what you need to do is make sure you have the proper projection on whenever you're working with any kind of anastropic material. So I've already got texture on and axis. I'm going to set this material to a flat projection. Now, uh, if I scale it up, maybe I can see from the front view, we should get these nice vertical lines traveling along Whaley. 
And I can go and maybe rotate it to be this projection, maybe move it down a little, and I'm going to do a nice radial. Now, unfortunately, the this sphere is rotated 90 degrees from what we want it to be. So I could spin it around and probably get the angle showing. But let's just not worry about that and show it over here. And now we should have this projection based on a nice radial on Whaley pulling out. Is he kind of blurry? I don't think he is. Um, I, oh, it's just this map. Uh, it's, it, anastropic doesn't show up too well when you have a very, very busy scene. It shows up a lot more distinctly if we open up the browser and go to maybe just a basic, uh, basic studio, something simple. Let's try that one. Yeah, okay, that just shows up better. You can see the radial. It's all, that's all about the reflection. Um, and so we can, like, you know, if we wanted these to be bigger, fatter lines, I can just scale that material way up, hit render. And now you see we're going to get, you know, fatter versions of those lines. We can really scale it down. We'll get very, you now they're so tiny I can't even see them. If we zoomed way up, we'd probably see it. Um, and we've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of different presets here, horizontal lines, uh, different type of radial. we got our circular kind, which is a bunch of like little different grinding, like it was getting ground a couple different times all layered up, so a bunch of little circles all over the place. We've got this grid one, which is a little bit weird, but uh, I, I want to hit the major different kind of presets, but it is cool looking. Um and it, it definitely changes the orientation that light is hitting it. So those are those are some additional new presets in the uh, anastropic setting. Just some fun things to add in there. Uh, we inside of your uh, folder, you can see that there is a uh, inside of the top coat folder. There's a change log. Actually, no, I haven't put that in yet. In the install folder, you see a change log. So you can open that up and you can actually get a list of all the different things. Uh, I think I hit everything. Oh, actually, I didn't. I missed one thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit that. Um, in Top Coat, let's start with a new material. Um, before, if you make a new material and you're doing something with transparency, Top Coat couldn't acknowledge it. It was a special type of layer. So if you were to turn on transparency and go into like you know like a nice glass type refraction, then or that's water actually. Uh, then we got this nice refraction going, and you have reflectance. Um, so before, Top Coat couldn't work with that. But now, if you hit Alt, well, I can hit Alt T and pop open my Top Coat. Um, We've got our transparency layer here. This this one, this default layer is not doing anything. So I can kill that off. Go to transparency. And we can now use our modifiers. And it's really only the modifiers that do anything. So we can change the reflection amount. And we can change our blur amount. Uh, I'm not even sure. F f no, Fresnel is blanked out. And we can also add, um, I think we, can we add bumps? I haven't tinkered with that. Add in, um, yeah, you can add bumps into it as well. So we also have our bump scale and bump depth. Um, so you can now modify your transparency channel in addition to everything else. Um, so yeah, that should cover all of the new features, all the new features I'm really excited about. It took a long time for us to be able to get a lot of those in. All this layer stuff down here was an entirely new thing we were tackling, very detailed, very complex. Um, and of course, the modifiers tab makes it so usable. Uh, thanks so much for grabbing Topcoat 1.5. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in some other videos. Bye-bye.